Okay, lesson two on gravitational fields. We're going to look at ways of comparing gravitational fields, quite an important technique to do with ratios, which uh, they like to ask um, in the exams, but also it comes up in lots of different areas as well. Uh, so handy techniques to learn. Um, and we're going to try to apply this to the moon. So just to start us off quickly, so um, let's think about what happens to gravity if you start at sea level. Um, where gravity is 9.81 newtons per kilogram. What is it? It's an altitude of 9,000 metres, okay, given the radius of the Earth and the gravitational constant. Okay, so um, we can find out the mass of the Earth first. So we need to rearrange that to get our answer for the mass of the Earth. Once we've done that, um, we can just add the extra 9,000 on and we'll find it makes just a small difference. Okay, so you can tell the difference between the mass. Uh, I think we're slightly higher now than the top of Mount Everest, but um, sort of up a very tall mountain, gravity will be a little bit weaker. Although, of course, it will all this is assuming that the Earth is a uniform sphere, uh, which we'll see later is not, you know, it does have some effect on gravity as you go around the Earth. Okay, so this is our ratios technique, which is handy for a lot of different situations. So we're going to consider a planet like, sort of like the Earth, which we've called planet X, where gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram, and ask what will it be on a planet Y, which has twice the mass and twice the radius. Okay, I always find it's quite handy to draw a little picture first, just to make sure you're clear in your head. So we're on a planet X, we've got a gravity G, we're on another planet, which has got twice the radius and has got a new gravity g dash okay the mass is twice as much and the radius is also twice as much okay when you've done lots of practice on these you'll find you probably don't need to draw the picture and do all this calculation but this is a good safe way to start so We've got G to be G on the gravity on planet X, and we've got D dash to be the gravity on planet Y. So we know that G is GM over R squared, so we know that G dash, our new gravity on planet Y, um, is GM dash over R dash squared. Then all we've got to do is substitute in. So we know that M dash here is 2M, and we know that R dash is 2R. Right, but the crucial thing to notice here is this is 2R all squared, so we need to square out the bracket and then take the numbers out the front and you end up with a 2 going out the front and the 2 squared coming out the front. So we end up with 2 over 4. But then this part here, gm over r squared, is this bit, the mass of the original planet. Okay, so we know that's g. So we'll find that gravity on this new planet is a half the gravity on the first planet. Okay, as you get better at these, you'll be able to do it that... Increasing the mass by a factor of 2 has made g dash go be twice as big, but increasing the radius by a factor of 2 has made it be four times smaller. So overall, it's gone up by a factor of 2, down by a factor of 4. It's going to be half as much. Okay, here's another one. Uh, but now we're introducing the idea which does make this quite hard where you've got density. So instead of telling you what's going on with the mass, they tell you what's going on with the density. So you might think that's the same thing, but what you've got to remember is that um, as the radius changes, the volume will change. So when it's half the density, but twice the radius, okay, the mass is increasing because of the radius increasing, but decreasing because of the density decreasing, and you've got to try and combine those two effects together. Okay, so we start with the same line, gravity on uh, x, is g and gravity on y is g dash so gravity on g is gm over r squared but gravity on y is gm dash over r dash squared but we need to use a formula so this formula here this is mass is volume times density so this part four thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere and rho is the density so m dash is 4 thirds pi times 2r cubed, because this is the new radius cubed, times a half row. Okay, so the 2 is cubed, so that's 8, but only half the density, so the, this new planet has got 4 times the mass. 
So then we can go back to our old technique and we can say it's four times the mass, twice the radius, but the radius is squared. So in fact, the gravity on the new planet is the same as the gravity on the old planet. Okay, again, if you want to try to take shortcuts, don't do it until you're totally confident in what you're doing. But the factors are in here that doubling the radius has made it go down by a factor of four because you're twice as far from the center, but up by a factor of eight because um, the volume is eight times as big, two cubed, but then you've halved the density, so that's made the mass go down by a factor of two. So we've gone down by four, down by two, a factor of two, up by a factor of eight. Overall, we're back where we started. Okay, here's some examples to do. So twice the radius and four times the mass is fairly straightforward. So 4m on the top and 2r squared on the bottom means you get back to the same as what you started with. 4 times the radius and 12 times the mass. So 4 times the radius will make it go down by a factor of 16. 12 times the mass will make it go up by a factor of 12. So we're going up by 12, down by 16. Overall, 3 quarters as much. Twice the radius and the same density. So twice the radius will make it go down by a factor of 4 in terms of the distance from the center, but up by a factor of 8 in terms of the mass. So we're 8 times bigger, 4 times smaller. Overall, we've got twice the original gravity. 10 times the radius and a quarter the density. Well, 10 times the radius is going to make us go down by a factor of 100. Um, but the mass would be a 1,000 times as big. But the density is a quarter as much, so instead of the mass being a 1,000 times as big, it's only 250 times as big. So we've gone up by a factor of 250, down by a factor of 100. Okay, overall, two and a half times as big. Find the density of a planet with the same surface gravity as the Earth, but eight times the radius. Okay, I'm just going to show you a little algebra technique to do this. So there is quite a bit of cancelling you can do here, because if we do g equals uh, g m over r squared, and then we do g, and then instead of writing m, we do the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed times density rho divided by r squared, you'll see that those two cancel out with the r squareds there, and we end up with 4 thirds pi r rho. So in fact, if you've got 8 times the radius and 1 eighth of the density, then you end up with the same gravity. Okay, so the new density must be the old density divided by 8, which is in fact not a million miles away from what Saturn is. Okay, the surface gravity of Saturn is pretty much the same as the surface gravity of the Earth, um, even though it's got a much bigger radius because it's got a much smaller density. Okay, so this question is about going to the moon. So here's a not a million uh, miles away from being a scale diagram of the Earth and the moon. So if you ever saw those sort of year seven diagrams of eclipses and you imagine that the moon is kind of here somewhere, right, this is roughly about the right scale of the Earth and the moon. Here's our point in the middle. So we're at some point in the middle here. What would happen if we were at that point? Okay, we've got a gravitational attraction to the Earth. We've got a gravitational attraction to the moon. Okay, we need to work out which one's stronger. I'm hoping that you can see that the Earth's pull will be stronger because the distance is the same, but the Earth's got a lot more mass. Um, in fact, here's a handy figure for you. The mass of the Moon is the mass of the Earth divided by 81. So then we're going to find the distance at which the gravitational field strength is zero. So obviously that's got to be somewhere nearer to the Moon over here somewhere, Okay, where the extra mass is cancelled out by the extra distance. And then we think about what would happen if we were slightly either side of that position. So here's our first question. Um, the gravitational field halfway between. So the gravitational effect of the Earth is gm of the Earth over Re squared. Remember, Re is a distance from the center of the Earth. So this is halfway. Okay, half of this number. Be careful always here. They do give you data in kilometers. Um, so 4 times 10 to the 5 kilometers of 4 times 10 to the 8 meters. So we've got half of that because we're halfway. So you get um, 1 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons, so only a hundredth of a newton per kilogram there. So gravity is quite weak from the Earth. Okay, but from the Moon, 
much weaker. In fact, you know how much weaker, really, because the distance is the same. 181st of the mass, so 181st of the f of the force. Okay, so the gravitational pull of the Earth is 81 times stronger than the gravitational pull of the Moon. The resultant field is the difference between these two numbers, okay? Because remember, these are pulling in opposite directions. Okay, so just under 1 Newton, uh, just under 1 times 10 to the minus 2, 0 0.01 Newtons per kilogram. Okay, the Moon's field is hardly affecting, making just over 1% difference to the gravitational field if the Moon wasn't there and you were just trying to get away from the Earth. Okay, but there will be a point where it's zero. So there will be a point when you head towards the moon when these two gravitational effects are balanced. Okay, where will that be? Well, that'll be when GE, which is the gravitational field of the Earth, GME over RE squared, is the same as the gravitational field of the moon. Okay, so if those two things are equal, that's when the gravitational field, the resultant gravitational field, becomes zero. doesn't mean there's no gravity, of course. It just means that there's two equal gravitational fields acting in opposite directions. Okay, but we know the mass of the Earth is 81 times the mass of the Moon. So we can substitute in here. Instead, instead of writing ME, I can write 88, 81 times MM. Obviously, I could have substituted that on either side. But I can now cancel out the MMs. Remember, this is not the radius of the Earth. This is the distance from the Earth. Okay. So if I cancel out those two things, then I and then I take the um, RE squared up there. In fact, this is the wrong way up, isn't it? This should say RE squared over RM squared. Um, and then I take the square root of that. Then I end up with. 9 equals RE over RM, okay, which means I'm 9 times further from the Earth than I am from the Moon. Okay, the final line there was right, 9 RE equals RM. So I'm 9 tenths of the way to the Moon. This distance here is 9 to 1 ratio.